Hey, today I'm going to show you how to build your own Langchain AI image detection module that you can ask questions about images and then use ChatGPT to give you a conversational answer. So we have, for example, this image which shows people and balloons and we can ask a question. So give a caption to the image and we get this response. This image shows a group of people walking across a busy street. So, but first I'm going to explain to you what Langchain is, how it works and what you can do with it. The thing, Langchain is just a framework that helps you build your own custom LLM application with external data or tools. The best way to explain it, imagine you have a really smart person, but he's completely useless. So you have someone who has with a goal to put a nail in a wall and he can talk about putting a nail in a wall. He knows what a wall is, what a nail is and all that, but he can't put the nail in a wall. So you're going to give him a hammer and a screwdriver and then tell him, put a nail in the wall and now you can choose between the hammer and the screwdriver so the right tool and put the nail in the wall so it actually becomes useful and that is what Langchain is. We can use the chat interface of ChatGPT and its brain and connect it with different kinds of tools and applications. So for example we can give him data from browsing the internet or now be able to detect images and work with that. Then what are those Langchain components? We have modules which is basically the wrapper of the LLM so we can interact with the different kinds of GPT models, so 3.5 or 4. We can customize how high the temperature is, so how much it's imagining, or for example, how many tokens we want so that we don't get like an age-long response. Then we have prompts, which is just the thing we want from it. So we write what's in the image or write a caption, and that is our prompt, so the exercise. Then we have chains, change at the thought process. So think back to the guy who's supposed to put a nail on the wall and he has a screwdriver and a hammer before him. He then gets the exercise, put the nail on the wall. And then you can see he thinks, okay, this is a nail, this is a wall. To get the nail on the wall, I have to drive it with force. Then he sees the tool, says, hmm, I can't use the screwdriver, I should rather use the hammer. Then he picks up the hammer and then he does it. And the chains are the thought process of the LLM. So you can see the LLM thinking which tool it should choose to uh, complete the task. And then the tool is just functions we create for the LLM to use for. And now I'm going to explain the code and show you in the code step by step how everything works. So the first thing we got to do in our code is we have to create a .env file where we put our OpenAI key because this all works with the API from OpenAI. For this we're going to create a .env file, you're just going to delete the example part. You have the OpenAI key and then in there you put your API key. You get the API key by just going on the OpenAI website under API and creating an account and get yourself a key. So next thing is we're going in our notebook and we import all the needed installments that we need. Then we import the installments. For this we use Langchain, we use Transformers, PLI, torches and all this, but I'm going to explain it in more, to more detail. Then now the first thing we got to do is we got to create the helper function. So we got to create the tools the AI that can use. For this, the first thing we want to create is the image captioning tool. And it's a class. And the first thing is we have to give it a name and a description. We need this so the LLM can understand to use which tools. So it has an idea. If it has multiple tools, it can decide which tool is right for the job. So we give it a name and the description. Then the next thing we create a run function and in there we use an image and the PLI library to convert the image into its RGB, so red, green and blue values. Because different kinds of modules use different kinds of image versions or image kinds of data types. And we have to always get the same kind of data type so the model can work with it. So then the next thing is we're going to create our module, which is the Salesforce pre-created module. So we don't train a module ourselves, we just import one. So if you run this for the first time, you got to download the module, so it takes a while. And then we choose the device that we run it on. Right now we use the CPU, the CUDA would mean you use the GPU. So if you have a faster GPU than CPU, then use just CUBA instead of that, and it will be faster. Next thing is we have a processor and a module. The processor is basically the same thing we did before with the image, where we re-change the data and put it into a form the model can understand. And in the model, we just define the module and connect it to the device. And now we have our input-output, which is basically the same thing, but in a usable way. And also the max tokens describes how long the response is going to be. So if we ask them create a 
caption and we put the tokens to five, it most likely will cut off and will not give us like a full description because there's just not enough tokens and tokens mean words. And if you put it like really long, it takes more time and it also uses more energy and also computing power. And now we use the caption processor decoder, which basically allows us to change the output into a humanly understandable way. Because usually it puts it into tokens, so into single words in a dictionary. So we will have a dictionary with a comma cat comma has comma a comma hat instead of a cat as a hat. So this just puts it in a way that we can understand it better. Then we also add an asynchronous function which means that we can't run the same thing at once, so it doesn't run into any interferences. Also, the code I took from a Medium article, I'm going to link down below, so shout out to that guy. Then the next thing we do is the object detection tool. The goal of the object detection tool is to go into the image and find out where what is. So we say like, this is a person. So we would put a frame around and say, this is a person with a high likability. And then we can detect where it is and how many are there. For example, if we want to count the amount of objects in an image, which is also really practical. So we don't kind of just let's say just create a caption, but also interact with the image. Then we give it, like I said, a name and description, what it's supposed to do. Then we create the run function. We again change the image into RGB values so we can understand it better and the model can work with it. Then we define our new processor and model. This time we're going to use the Facebook deter model. The term means detection transformers, and it's also a pre-trained model you got to download, but it makes the whole thing way easier. So we got to use two different kind of models for two different kind of tasks. And later the LLM will decide which is best for which task, which is the brain part of it. Then we also do the inputs and the module, we connect it, it's the same process. And now we got to also do something called target resizing or image resizing, which is that the boxes fit the sizing of the image. So everything works again. So you see like the whole thing you got to basically do is not train models, or anything, but make the data work with the model. That's what we're doing in those things. And then the next thing we add just some simple Python logic where we get the results as dictionaries and then we format it in a way that it looks more appealing for the person. And we also add an asynchronous function so we don't run into any issues. The next thing we gotta just import our OpenAI things and load our API key so we can use it. And then we gotta create the brain part or the conversation AI. For this we initialize the tools, so our image caption and object detection. We then have conversation memory, so the K means how many previous conversations we are saving and how we can interact with. So for example, we can ask a question about a picture and then we call and ask another question and we still have the context of that question. You can set it as high or as low as you want to. Then we initialize the LLM, so the large language module, and this part we use ChatGPT and the GPT 3.5 module. We add our API key. The temperature means how much the thing is imagining and how much it adds to it. And we want it to set to zero because there's no need for it to really get outside of our scope. And then we initialize our agent. Our agent is now all of this combined together so we can create our thought chain and use our tools. So we can name the agent, we can set our tools to tools, we set our LLM to the OpenAI LLM, we can max iterations, meaning how often, it, how long it should think. So it shouldn't have like a thought chain of like 20 thoughts when we only needed to basically have like two or three. And for both means it shows us our, the thought context so we can see what it's thinking of. And the memory is the conversational memory. So we also add that in so we have context of what we said before. And the early stopping method means when it stops and it stops when it's done with the process. And then now we just got to run the whole thing by having our path to our image, which is just also in here. You can change that to any of the other images. Then we can write our question here and we get our response in which we run our agent. We add the question and then the image and then we print the response. So we write a caption for the image. We see the chain is initialized and we can see the thought process of the LMM in action. 
And we see we have our observation, we have our action, and then we see our response. So it's people walking across a busy street with lots of balloons. Now we can also do things like asking the LMM what's inside of the image itself. So we can do the image detection one, just to see that we have different kinds of abilities. And we see this shows us all the images that are in there. So the coordinates of a person, of a car, of a handbag. And here on down here, we see our response that person, persons, cars or handbags in the image. And you can use this base code to implement in any kind of application. So if you want to have like a web application where you upload images, the only thing you need to change is the way to handle the images and the user question. And then you give this response and you can tweak it as much and as hard as you want it to, to fit your goal. I hope you find this interesting and if you liked it, then like and subscribe and also check out the original posters medium post.